Hi, I'm Theo Stocker for Yachting Monthly and I'm here at the Southampton Boat Show. I've come down onto the pontoons to have a look at the new Daler 46 SQ. She's a performance cruiser, so she's not designed to race necessarily, but she is designed to be quick and fun to sail. So let's have a look around. So this is the Dela 46 SQ and we've got the, uh, the same hull as the older 46. They haven't updated too much about her. It's largely cosmetic and accommodation updates that they've done, things like ventilation and layout. But this is a pretty sleek hull shape. Top sides are moderately high, but not too high. You can see a place to step up here with the gate. So uh, there's lots of headroom down below, but she looks pretty nice. And you can see that she doesn't have any of the big hard chines that some boats have now. But she has got a reasonably wide transom, fold down bathing platform with a nice big ladder there, and some fold up handrails to make getting in and out of the water easier. All right, let's step aboard. So starting at the stern, we've got the nice bathing platform which is folded down, so that's easy access in the marina. And then you've got this ladder uh, which folds out and you can see here these little handrails that pop up. They'll come up when you put the ladder down to make climbing out of the water a lot easier. Like so many boats, we've done away with the transom seats. So you would sit outboard of the wheel to helm. Here's your lazarette, quite heavy. That bumps there slightly. But you've got a really good deep locker, easily big enough to fit a dinghy into there. And then just here, access to the autopilot. And then just in front of the main sheet traveller there, you've got access to the steering quadrant. And then we've got the helm stations here. So we've got twin wheels going to a single rudder um, with Jeffa steering, so it should be nice and taut and direct. And then you've got chart plotters and an instrument repeater just outboard here, sort of just raised off deck level slightly. And then forward of the helm, You've got traveller control for the full width main sheet traveller uh, and you've got access to the German main sheet system here on these Lumar 50 performance winches, self-tailing winches. Under the seat next to the helm here you've got uh, a rope bin and a gas locker that's got the shore power in at the moment and then the backstay is a split backstay here with a Selden hydraulic backstay tensioner. The cockpit's good and wide uh, and uh, obviously a little bit too wide to brace between the seats so you've got a table in the middle which will fold up. That's a cockpit locker. Full of boat show stuff at the moment but easy enough for your fenders lines. You would fit a life raft or a dinghy there in there just about if you wanted to. Halyards are led aft here under the deck. And you've got two banks of clutches which come aft there and they just emerge on deck there. Again with 50 self-tailing winches from Lumar and you would probably want to add in some little rope bags for stowage here. Little hatches open for the aft cabins for ventilation and you've got captive washboard stowage there as well. Before we head down below, let's have a look on deck. So stepping up, you've got reasonably wide cockpit combings with grip on top, so they're quite nice and solid. And you've got sloping sides here, so that would be comfortable to sit on when the boat's healing. One of the little tweaks they've done is they've added in this bit of bling. So that's a backlit Daler logo. How's that for fancy? And you can see as we look along here that we've got four opening hatches in the coach roof. So we'll have a look at that below, but that gives loads of really good ventilation. You've got quite a big uh, spray hood here, but then you've got long coach roof handles that takes you, take you forward to the shrouds. Shrouds are mounted outboard, clear of the side decks, gives lots of stability for the mast. And that's on top of these molded uh, bulwarks. So nice and uh, nice and solid. 
can't see where they drain to, so I don't know if that will collect water over time. And then at the foot of the mast, you can see all the halyards coming down, some of them still moused, but they go aft through the ducting. You've got a Selden gas strut kicker, and a nice powerful main sheet that goes all the way to the end of the boom. Looking up, we've again a Selden aluminium mast with uh, about nine tenths fractionally rigged, two spreader rig, obviously with the adjustable backstay, so you've got a bit of uh, tuning capability there, which is nice for people who like to tweak, get the sail set just right, depower with a bit of backstay. And then coming forwards, this boat's got uh, synthetic teak decks uh, with grip moulding on the rest of the coach roof. And then you've got two more opening hatches here for the fore cabin and front part of the saloon. And then we'll go forwards and have a look at the anchor locker. So again, that's just above your forward berth. Then one thing they've added onto the SQ, this version of the boat, is you've got the moulded bow sprit. And a really nice touch is that that uh, includes the bow roller for the anchor, but rather than coming into the locker on deck, it comes through underneath the deck into the locker, so there's nothing to foul on the sails there. Here's the anchor locker. So you've got an electric windlass there. You can see the chain coming aft under the deck and then a really good deep drop there actually, so loads of space for chain, easily fit in. So there's at least 60 metres of chain if you want. And this has got, looks like 8 mil stainless steel chain, so that's a reasonably high spec, that's nice. And then the furling headsail, it's a little clue to sort of performance aims, is that you've got a uh, flat furler, so you can see that it's got webbing coming out and a really short, low drum so that the sail is nice and close to the deck. You've also got pop-up deck cleats, which is nice, means that none of your lines foul on that while you're sailing. Right, let's have a look below. Your instrument repeaters there, a nice long, gentle set of four steps down into the saloon. Coming down the steps, the first thing you notice is the, just the sense of space and light in here. As with lots of modern boats, there's a real effort to include lovely artificial lighting. So behind the lockers there, above the lockers, and above those, here are the coach roof windows that I mentioned that you could see on deck, and all of those open. You don't see many boats where they all open, apart from these little tiny ones at the front. So that's four along each side open. And you've got two opening hatches here both facing aft. Some boats they will face one forward, one aft. So this boat's got quite a lot of stowage. She's a cruising boat and she has got built into her quite a number of little lockers. So in here you've got that's bottle stowage or cup stowage, probably mostly bottles. Uh, you've got stowage here, so space for cutlery, drawers, bits and bobs that you would normally have on a cruising boat. In the galley, we've got a double sink. We've got a bin. Double bin in there, that's good. And then you've got a nice little detail here with the fridge, so it's top opening there. And underneath, you've also got a front opening door. Slight disadvantage with that is when you open this door, all of the cold air from that fridge can empty out. That's not too too big an issue as long as that door is well insulated and well, well sealed. Three burner stove here, proper cooking. So it's quite nice, you've got a, a bulkhead behind you that you can brace against. Three good big pan drawers there and a decent amount of stowage behind the galley as well. So as a cruising boat in the galley that works quite well. Let's have a look in the saloon. So here you've got a, a folding out saloon, a table, I won't open that now because that's covered in all the brochures. Uh, you can opt for that to be a telescopic, electrically operated table so you can lower that down and make the saloon into a double berth. But here's a little uh, nice little detail. So the seating on the opposite side of the saloon, I'm going to press this button down here. Oh, 
Right, that'll keep on going. I'll put it back in for now. But that electrically slides the port berth out to be the seating for the dining table and you can put it straight back there again. This boat does have a chart table and there's an option. You can have it either uh, in the middle here, just front of the, in front of this little aft section. So you can have it forward facing there, obviously breaks up that berth. You can have it at the forward end, so you've still got it forward facing, or you can have it aft facing in this corner. To my mind, that makes a little bit more sense because you've got more stowage. You've got all the electrical and electronic switches and controls there, but that is an option. And then above that, you've got these top opening, so they're bottom hinged lockers, which is really good because you can open them and you don't necessarily lose everything out before you can see what you're doing. Quite solidly engineered, you've got these cables to control dropping down. It's a little bit disappointing how small that is. Obviously there's a, a bit of lost space there and lost space above it with the lighting. But still you've got three of those lockers down each side. And as everybody knows for a cruising boat, stowage is absolutely essential stuff to place to hide all of your stuff okay you're going forwards into the bow forward cabin sorry now this is obviously going to be an owner's cabin you've got an island berth in here which just makes getting in and out much easier you don't have to sort of shuffle and spin around onto the bed that's a really decent sized double so that feels good in here on the SQ, the 46 SQ, they've worked really hard to try and improve quality. So little things like solid wood trim around the doors and this neat little bit of engineering going into the forward heads. You've got a curved door, which means that you've actually got a really big opening and it makes it much easier to get in there rather than a flat door sort of hidden on one side or the other. And then in here you've got sink, heads, and nicely you've got a separate shower stall so you can have your shower and keep the rest of the heads compartment dry without everybody getting wet socks. Bit of ventilation up there, always good. And then stowage wise in here, you've got stowage under the, bun under the bunk. I think this comes out as a drawer or that, that lifts up um, or it's under the, under the mattress I think. And then you've also got Lots of locker space here, shelved locker space, hanging locker space. Now this is in Appy Oak, so you can see that the wood, if I go close up here, there's lots of little veneers of wood, of oak, so it's pretty hard wearing. I mean it's veneered, it's not sort of solid wood edges around, but that's pretty standard on production boats these days. They really have tried to sort of increase the feel of quality uh, on this boat um, and just lift her above the sort of the, the entry level production boats to some extent. All right, let's go aft. Here we go. Here's the main heads in the main saloon. So again, you've got a heads down here. There we go. And then round here, you've got a separate shower stall. A little bit of a shame there's no um, hanging locker space, wet locker space for wet waterproofs or life jackets. Um, there would be space in there, I think. Right, this is the aft cabin. And this one's got the option for two separate beds, which is quite good if you're cruising with family. You can shove two kids in there and they don't have to fight about where the line is in the middle of a double bed. And then you've got locker space around there. And engine access there. We'll have a look at the engine in just a second. And then this is the starboard aft cabin and this has got the full width double berth which is the other option. And you've got good ventilation. You've got a, an opening hatch there. And you've got an opening hatch up here. And one of the things that uh, proper sailors will appreciate is you've got lots of handrails grab holds here both on the side, just by the side decks and above the head, so you can actually move around. It's a big open space, but you have got a number of places to hang, hold on. Now, I'm just over six foot, so you've got about six foot four of headroom in here, so that's a decent amount of headroom. Right, let's have a look in the engine bay. So this lifts up at the front, gas struts, so it takes the weight of it. So one thing that you'll notice here is that you've actually got the sail drive 
and the gearbox at the forward end of the engine. Now, Dela have done that partly because it's a slightly neater use of space that under where the sloping steps, you can put the lower bit of the engine, which is the gearbox and the sail drive, to take up less space. You can see the exhaust coming out here, 90 degree exhaust elbow there. Little expansion tank for the coolant, access to the raw water filter there. But you have to have access to the what is the for, normally the forward end of the engine there uh, to do the fuel filters. But I'll show you that we've got really good access there as well. So it's a slightly unusual solution, but I think it, it makes sense. I think it probably works reasonably well as well. Right, let's open up the hatch in the aft cabin. This is port aft cabin access to the engine. So a light comes on automatically in there. So it's a little bit of a shame that door isn't hinged because it's quite big and quite heavy. I guess that could be fitted afterwards if you wanted it. And then you've got really good access here to the fuel filters, oil filter. The alternator is over on the other side and under here you've got the alternator belt. And then the battery wiring here as well. And you've also got here, you've got a forced air ventilation system just to make sure you're getting engine, the enough air into the engine compartment. And there's a good big water trap for your exhaust. Right, so that's the boat. We've had a look around. Um, I hope I've shown you everything that's of interest. I'm just gonna go through a couple of the stats so that you know exactly how big she is, all that kind of stuff, and crucially, how much she costs. Now she's the 46 SQ, and that reflects her hull length of 45 foot and nine inches, or just under 14 meters. When you add on the bowsprit, that's an extra meter, taking her up to 49 feet. Uh, so that will have a little bit of an impact on your mooring fees, probably. Um, almost all of her length is also reflected in the waterline um, with a vertical bow and an almost vertical stern, giving you 42 and a half feet of waterline length. So she should go pretty well upwind and she's got quite a nice narrow waterline. So she promises to go up upwind well as well, even in light airs. Um, draft, the shallowest draft option is 1 meter 85 and that can go up to 2.58 meters depending on the keel option. Now obviously there's loads of options to go with this boat from what instruments you want to what sails to the colour of the cushions, all of that stuff. Basic price, the most basic price that you could have on this boat, um, which is a sail away price, so including a basic level of sails, would be um, 381 thousand pounds British pounds in US dollars that's about 430 that doesn't include tax in either country um, when you add everything in the boat that we're on today now this has had quite a few upgrades it's got extra instruments it's got some electric options it's got the performance sails and it's got some really nice sort of upgrades all around the boat that comes to 570,000 pounds including VAT in the UK. Um, in the US, so US dollars, that's $646,000. Obviously, import, different tax regimes, that price is going to vary. But she's a lovely looking boat. They've definitely done a good job of trying to put in some quality touches, um, and I'm looking forward to getting out and testing her soon. Mm -hmm.